Hello friends, welcome back to another episode of Software Inc. So last episode we reached a hundred million dollars, hundred million monies, <laughs> which means that we have plenty of money to expand our company even further, which is what I was looking forward to. We've officially wrote out all the little bumps and hiccups uh, when it comes to heading towards bankruptcy, which makes me really excited. So the next thing we are going to build is our, uh, our gaming slash porting slash update focus kind of building. Over here, over here, this is going to be our research department. This of course is going to be our printing garage. And then we have our support and marketing. So what we need to do is a gaming build. So I think we're going to go ahead and delete this back part of this building um, and create a very girthy building. <laughs> So let's do that. We'll leave a little corridor for all of our access points, especially to the boiler room. I believe you can only, what the heck? Yeah, you can only access it from the back. I think this is going to be too small of a office space, but let me go ahead and start our building speed build uh, kind of challenge and we'll see what we come up with. Hello from the future. So like I mentioned previously, we are going to be building ourselves a game building. So the idea for this building is to be relatively large so that way it can house all of our gaming teams, um, but not be as tall as the research and development building. So I decided to first start off with a horizontal building so that way we can build out um, instead of having to just build up. Uh, but I decided to scrap that idea because I didn't like the way of it looking like chock-a-block with weird building sizes and everything like that. So I decided to opt for changing this kind of vertical area and turning it into an outdoor seating area with some nice park benches, some very ambient lights, and then of course a money tree because uh, you need to be reminded that you work for one of the wealthiest tech companies in the world while you're having breakfast in, outdoors in the garden. <laughs> so moving back into this kind of building, I decided to go ahead and uh, start off by splitting the room in half. And I wanted to do this because I, the way I did, I've done it in other games is having an MMO for each adventure game and then a regular adventure game, but for like each of the games, obviously. But as I was fleshing this out, um, I didn't, Think that we'd have enough room for everything to go that way but I am just gonna go ahead and start by kind of building mirror rooms next to each other so that way they're very similar like I said I think the easiest way um, when you're designing these massive buildings for your team from scratch is to create rooms that you can easily duplicate so that way you aren't having to redo and have separate rooms for each team. I mean, unless you're into that, in which case, totally understand understandable. Um, go ahead and put those builds on the uh, Steam community page so I can download them and try them out. But for the most part, and from what I've seen from other builders, is it's a lot easier to just go through and um, do, do duplicates. So I decided to start building out this first office. Um, the game teams need four designers, seven programmers, and two artists um, each for like the minimum of everything that we need. So this first room is going to be kind of like our design room. I decided to go for the smaller desks because that's what would fit in this space um, with uh, the sound barriers between each of them so that way we didn't get complaints about them being too noisy because we're already getting a bunch of complaints already so I didn't want to add to that. Um, here I'm kind of fleshing out what I'd want to do for the artists because the artists there only needs to be two but I like having more artists because I hate how long the art takes when it comes to these kind of uh, jobs. So I was looking at what it would look like with four artists and kind of separating out that space. You know, we're looking at very, very tiny rooms here. And that's what one of these notifications are on this room is that there's too many desks um, for the amount of, for, for that room size. So. I went through, started adding some plants, trying to make it look nicer, nicer, adding the additional stuff for each um, 
person designated for the area and I don't know if you knew this but actually those um, leader inbox things are one of the best tools for the designers um, it, I think it has like a pretty high rating for the designers which uh, is not something you would expect for you know that <laughs> considering the artists have their own their programmers have their own and then the service have their own but the leaders and the designers both get the inbox which I think uh, is something that they could work on in the future. So here I am laying out what it would look like with seven programmers and this kind of center room. And yeah, I was just trying to get the vibe of the layout of everything and nothing's really set in stone yet, but I can understand why they didn't necessarily like that. So I decided to go ahead and change my mind. And instead of having two teams per floor, we're just gonna have one. So I decided to scrap everything for the most part um, and spread out, give, give, give ourselves our own space because realistically we have several more research and development rooms that we need in our skyscraper. So I'm not really too worried about the height in comparison to that. I mean, it'll be a tall building, but I don't think it'll take away from the, the majesty of our uh, R&D building. So this room is going to be our leader's office, obviously. Um, and from here, I was thinking about where I wanted to put the bathrooms for this building. Um, like I said, we want to cut down on the amount of notifications we get, like there's not enough toilets, etc., etc. So here I was going through and trying to build out um, enough bathrooms for everybody to uh, be able to go. And I decided to go for a design that's very similar to the other two buildings we have on this lot which is um, a toilet and then toilet in their own room and then the sinks out in the hallway um, so yeah that's what I decided to do I also wanted to just go back and work on this office space because it was still looking pretty small um, obviously not as small as we had it but if I have like a good layout and I think it works has enough enough like feng shui about it um, that just makes things go a little bit easier. I also decided that this um, office would look better if it was pushed back another tile and it was a little bit off center and more going into the the second half of the building because uh, I didn't like the door being right there so I moved the door forward so that way there was enough space between the desks and the chairs um, for things to kind of move a little bit smoother. So I shut off this first area and then um, moved along to setting the desks for the other teams. So this one is going to be our art team over here in this corner. I'm just measuring, making sure everything looks pretty even. Um, decided to expand that door a little, that wall a little bit so that, so it was a little bit more parallel because they can walk around to the back side of their tables um, pretty easily versus having to make room for a whole entire doorway and a whole slew of employees trying to get from that first office into the back office. I also thought it would be fun to kind of color coordinate this build a little bit since we don't really have that in our other um, buildings. So now I had to figure out kind of a good way to lay out the seven desks in this room. There was obviously going to be enough space for it, um, but I didn't want it to be so cookie cutter. I guess <laughs> so I decided to go with a layout that was a little bit more open um, while still feeling kind of communal uh, but everybody had their own space so yeah like I said this is kind of what I went for and I also wanted to liven up the desks and add some plants and do some bookcases and making sure that the effectiveness of the team is at its highest capacity considering that uh, that isn't necessarily i mean we have it in our other rooms um but it's when, when you have a team that's going to be working on a lot of projects like your game team are going to help out the other game teams it's good to make sure that they have a very great work environment i guess so i'm fleshing out the bathrooms adding those sinks the toilets all that jazz adding the color uh, that i want for each room i decided since this building kind of had that older vibe to it that we'd go ahead and just do one of the pre-built um, room styles it's got the brick on the outside and then the blue on the interior 
And then I thought we'd spice it up with having different colored wallpapers in the bathroom. And you can tell from the upper level, but as long as the outdoor one is uh, the same as everything else, it makes the building look pretty, pretty good. So uh, make sure to get this front office corridor, corridor, corridor as well. And then I wanted to think about how to go up a level because it is pretty tight out in this main hallway. I decided to opt for some elevators. Normally, if you're playing this game and uh, you have office hazards turned on, then you obviously don't want a, you want to make room for stairs and an elevator, but since I do not like playing with the office hazards, I decided to take that off. And then I liked this uh, visual of having the corner windows open, so I just put a little, turned it into a little lounge so you can go bake in the sun in like a, an all glass sunroom um, if you're burnt out from, you know, your job. You can just go sit on a couch in this room that only has a couch in it. <laughs> and so yeah, I am just gonna go ahead and continue to copy this for each floor, making sure that the trim all matches. Like I said, it's gonna be an older building, but it's gonna look a little bit more modern on the inside. I mean, we're not going crazy, right? This isn't the full Sims, but as modern as this game will allow, make sure that the leader's room is nice and bright and allows you know, the team members to see that their uh, manager is actually working. That's one thing that drives me crazy about my job is all of the manager's offices are upstairs, so I have no idea if they're actually working. I mean, I'm sure they are, but I feel like having the office for your leader right there with the rest of your team holds them a lot more accountable to actually uh, earn their paycheck. Is that pretty anti-capitalist of me? Maybe I shouldn't say that, but anyways, like I said, uh, the best thing about building like this is that you can just copy and paste everything from one floor to the next. So that makes it a lot easier for getting things um, set into place. And you don't have to, you know, rebuild everything. I decided to add a plant in that corner, do a bookcase in the middle, another plant, go ahead and select everything and then just copy and duplicate it upstairs. I think having a restroom area on each floor is super important because you, by the end of the game, you get so many weird notifications that it's just from like glitchy team members that if you can ease that a little bit by providing enough um, bathrooms and kitchens from the get go, then you can just go and see which employee is like having a hard time and then just like fire them. Um, I'm just kidding. I would never do that. Don't assume the worst. Um, and so on this level is where we're going to switch things up a little bit. So. Like I mentioned for my R&D build, I think the best solution for managing kitchen problems is having a meeting and a kitchen level um, every two floors. I think that's just really, really nice. And then also a mass bathroom because I, when I tell you I do not like the bathroom glitch where they're all yelling at you, I really mean it. Okay, don't ever think I don't mean it. That is such an annoying notification. So yeah, I'm just doing the basic layout that we need for the canteen, the meeting room, and then the super mega bathroom area. So I put the door there initially, but then I realized I built the kitchen too small. So yeah, I'm just kind of shifting everything over so that way we can actually get into the kitchen. I put three stoves and three fridges. I do not realistically think they're going to use all of those, but that's kind of the point, right? We just want an area that's nice, gets them enough food, um, and if eventually we have to move up to using all three fridges, then at least they're already set and we don't have to refinagle a bunch of stuff. Another hack for getting the most out of these rooms is getting round tables. You can fit so many more chairs at round tables than you can any with any other table. So it's really a good hack to squeeze as many chairs into a canteen as possible. Don't forget to add your fridges, your um, vending machines, and your coffee maker. Coffee is gonna make everybody work a little bit harder but have to visit the bathroom more. Um, and then the fridges and the vending machine are just in case, you know, your chefs aren't cooking enough food, they have that available to them as well. You never know, maybe one of our team members is, you know, 
vegetarian and our chef did not provide like make anything vegetarian that day so it's it's a safety measure that's what it is so I'm just shifting around making sure that we have one sink for every toilet um, which we now do and then moving on to the the meeting rooms uh, meeting rooms I just like to do a long table in the center and then just slap a bunch of okay chairs around it hopefully they aren't spending a bunch of time in there and then just some TVs I imagine that they're having this you know meeting and they need a projector uh, to discuss business and to discuss you know I don't okay I actually don't know I've never worked in a business before in my life but that's kind of the basic layout that we're gonna go for with our game building because yeah it just that's all we need for right now we just have our two game teams and we can absolutely expand it in the future especially now that we have the blueprints for all of those set out so we're going to be expanding now into our main building and getting everything symmetrical again uh, moving with these kind of diagonal walls it definitely adds a tinge of um, uniqueness to the building however um, it is a pain in the butt when you are trying to actually build it. Uh, I messed up with the slants. Uh, I think, is it this one? Yeah, this is the room where I messed up on the slants a little bit, but I go back and I fix it. Don't worry. I went to go place the stairs and you have to have that weird box on the top level to place the stairs. Um, and then I was getting a notification that the room wasn't big enough, whatever. Anyways, got that all fixed and um, set for our stairs in this one. It's funny that in our smaller, older building, we have elevators and then in this nice, fancy new one, we have um, stairs. But <laughs> I honestly did not think about that until watching this playback and I'm like, oh, maybe I should add an elevator to this building. So I'm looking around and trying to make sure that there's enough gas outputs for everything and looking and I was like, oh, that is something that I did wrong. I accidentally built these rooms uh, slightly different so I can't just copy everything over like I like to do. So I just fixed that. Um, that's how I did it in my original build from the last part of this season, the first the first game of the season that's how i was building them but i made them a little bit smaller since we were on the smaller plot of land now so so my idea for expanding this i like the audio team um to be one of the smaller research and development teams because you don't need as many and then the teams for 2D needs to be really large, um, 3D I think also is relatively big, and then obviously system needs to be huge and network moderately large. We'll see um, when it comes time to actually getting those teams up and running the actual sizes that we need for them, but at our current layout, each half of a building is 19 chairs, I believe, um, so that's pretty pretty good. Uh, size for most of the research and development. I just, I like things, like if I'm not researching a 2008 research by the end of 2008, then what's the point, right? Like I wanna blast it out of the park. I wanna make sure that anybody who's producing any software that requires 3D or network or system, all of them, they have to pay me, right? I wanna patent them all. Um, <laughs> and obviously that's going to require a pretty large law team, which I am also planning on putting in this room. So yeah, I'm just making sure that all of the rooms are set up the way that I want them to be, kind of like have them duplicated to, you know, fit each thing. Um, but the other thing I wanted to consider for this building is starting off our canteen and meeting room over here as well, because we don't... I don't like them switching all the way over to the other building to do that. So I'm just kind of trying to mess around with the structure here. I want the main hallway to look the same on each level. So it was like, do I go through and give them a bigger canteen and then a meeting on the next floor? You know, just a lot of things you have to think about, but I decided to go with this layout with the the stove and the fridge as the only one in that room 
I wanted to make sure to add a vending machine and a coffee machine and a serving platter. Um, and then I went to go use some custom content for placing tables and I was like, you know what? I probably shouldn't do that in case somebody doesn't have that game asset. And they're like, where is it? It's on the Steam Workshop, um, but it also only fit four chairs around it. And obviously I like the big round tables to fit as many chairs as possible on it. So. I decided to line this window wall with some tables to kind of mimic the bar feel that we have in the other build, the support build, um, but we're going to get the majority of use out of that round table. It's going to be able to sit the most amount of people. I also wanted to kind of change this around so it made more sense, so that it felt a little bit more airy, and I ultimately decided that that was a good enough build. It was good enough, you know, it, it, we had to move on. I think I reduced this down to from an hour speed build. And at a certain point, I'm just like, okay, it's gonna be good enough. If I get inspiration later, I can change it. Um, so this meeting room is gonna be a little bit more luxurious. What do we have there? A rug? Oh my God. All right, I hope that time, uh, what was it? Whatever, that time thing wasn't too terrible. So let's go ahead and scale up and take a look at what we have so far. So of course we have our garage. I decided to expand our R&D department a little bit as well as um, create our gaming building. So I know what you're thinking, like this building isn't even full. If this is supposed to be the si skyscraper, why is it so small? I just wanted to take it easy and not overdo it at first because we are going to have a little bit of growing pains. So first things first, I want to go ahead and assign these rooms to the gaming room, to the game team with a pass through allowed, and then this one also needs to be assigned to game, okay? This one that has game in it, let's go ahead and uh, unassign it, and we'll go ahead and unassign this one as well. So we want game to go into here. So we hired employees to match here uh, for 19, I believe. Let's see. Uh, if we go here and we select for nine, and then this one also has nine, I believe. Nine, nine, and 18. Whereas this one uh, has room for 15. So we have 18 and we only need 16. Um, so we need to go ahead and move some of the employees from the game team onto the next game team. So it shouldn't be too terrible. Um, I do want to make sure that everybody sits appropriately, but I'm not really sure how to do that besides auto assigning. I know I can go here and do limit room usage and like I can just have the artists go in here, right? But if I do this one and this one, then they can't pass through because right when you go here to limit room usage right anyways um let's go ahead and make this a canteen and make this one our meeting room yeah that's kind of what we're looking at right now yeah a lot of fun a lot of fun building this so plans for next episode before I get too delirious. We are going to fill out this first floor here with our R&D team. They are going to, or with our porting team, and they're going to start blasting through port jobs like crazy because, you know, theoretically we can have so many people in here, 9, 27 plus 30, 34, I think total, something like that for this first floor and this whole first floor is going to be our port team. Up here, we're going to create an audio research team and they are going to design our research, our audio. And over here, we're going to start creating our second, um, our second game team with the purpose of creating an automation for all of our games. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and leave this part here. Thank you so much for joining me on this Let's Play series. I'm having a blast playing it. It seems like you guys are enjoying it as well, which really makes a great combination. As always, feel free to check out the description. It's got a link to my social medias, including my Patreon, my sticker shop, and my TikTok. Um, my Patreon is $3 a month. Pretty 
cheap. It gets your name at the end of the credits. And as always, I am open to suggestions on what you'd like to see as reward tiers. If you would like to support me for free, I would really appreciate that. You can do that by liking, commenting, and sharing my video for the YouTube algorithm. It really helps it get in front of more people's eyes. <laughs> and so until I see you guys again, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.